I would just like to firstly thank you all for coming. Um, this is our fifth mm -hmm. Sharing Connect. Each one of them has been really special with beautiful, generous, um, informed, intelligent, creative guests sharing their stories with us about different elements of their practice. And today, our special guest today, we have Vicky Bush. Vicky, welcome. You've had such an amazing mosaic journey, haven't you? You've been the the, you. the real <laughs> so diversity of your learning experiences and how you've accessed different types of mosaic and different materials and different techniques. And you know, you're really an example of someone with cumulative knowledge, you know, because you've you've <laughs> you've, you've learned so much, you know, you've um been immersed in smalty you've been immersed in stone you've been traveled you've traveled overseas numerous times you've um mm. had a number of mentors and and how i guess one of my key questions of course to you is why mosaic well before i answer that question caitlin i just want to say wow to heather like your presentation your words sorry sorry to divert caitlin but your yeah. presentation heather your words, your feelings, all of those things. I couldn't stop nodding my head. I was like this because you expressed absolutely everything that I feel when I look at my stone and play with it and cut it up and, and all of those things. Uh, I couldn't have asked for a better introduction or person before me to express everything how I feel. But going oh, back to... Thank you. Oh, I'm I mean, glad to share it's it. Just, it's, I, I share that feeling and I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but, Thank but sorry, you. Caitlin, going back to why mosaic, I don't know why mosaic, but, you know, going back nine years ago now when my husband said, you need a hobby, and I thought, <laughs> God, what am I going to do? And, you know, he connected me with, um, to Caitlin uh, to attend a, one of your courses. Yeah. Uh, this is going back pre the big bushfires. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where it, it just, it was something that I did. I connected with it. I loved it, fell in, fell in love and just wanted to create, had a thirst for it, wanted, dreamt about it, you know, played with it, looked at other mosaics. You know, Pinterest became like the oh, obsession of, what, what else can I create? What else can I make? Um, I don't know why mosaic, but it was just something that was so, so different um, and exciting and tactile and just being able to, to do all of that sort of stuff. And, and I fell in love with it. And, you know, these... these yeah, it was a material and a method that connected with you straight away. I mean, oh, absolutely. You're, you're one of those students. Like, I, I was a bit like that too. Like, the first class, you start and you go, okay, well, my first class and you get your first project <laughs> and you come back week two and it's finished. <laughs> yes, that was me. It's finished. <laughs> and then, in the te you know, I did this to my teacher too. I She started me off first lesson, came back second lesson, finished it. I hadn't learned anything properly yet, but I'd finished it. I was just completely, absolutely hooked. And you like that. You came the first lesson, you were doing, I, I think it was irises or something. Or yeah, yeah. The, the second lesson, violets, the same lesson, the second day you came back, completed next project. And, and, and you really have never stopped. Oh, it's just absolutely. been a, an evolution of, of, um, of, of this of continual learning for you. And um, but so before we get to talking about, your particular connection with natural materials and your particular connection with place and land. Um, tell us a bit about the evolution of your learning experience, because I think for, for students who are and mosaic artists who are all over the place, that, that learning is, you know, you've had such diverse learning. There's not one way to mosaic. There's not one way to learn. There's not one right teacher. Yeah, it's, it's that's right. Accumulation of, of knowledge from, all over the place. So can yeah. you tell us about that, Nikki? I mean, basically, well, once I, you know, I started the courses and the classes with Caitlin um, and then I had wonderful opportunities that came across and that was, you know, I had MANS, um, which was a great way to connect with other like-minded people. Um, I went to courses and workshops. I think I went to a, a Marion Shapiro uh, workshop about two weeks after I had started Mosaics. 
And it was like, oh my gosh, 3D stuff, what else can I create? Um, so there was, you know, the friendships and the other people that I met through Mosaics and it just drew me in. I wanted more of that. Um, so, yeah, it was my, my experience sort of just started locally and then, you know, I, I, because of, you know, the connections through symposiums, through exhibitions, um, through the, just the Mosaic community, I got to go overseas um, with the inaugural Helen Bodicum uh, group and that was going to um, Italy. And wow, that was the beginning of everything for me that opened up so many experiences, so many um, beautiful, beautiful mosaics to look at. Um, we went to, you know, looking at the, the histories. So we went to Venice, Aquileia, uh, Ravenna, Spilimbergo, all of those places just triggered so many, I don't know, hungers, I guess, just wanted to learn how people were using the materials and and, and I, I think that's that what you say is really important and I know some other people in this gathering today were able to attend one of the tours with Helen and um I think being where we are in Australia we you know we have this it's a we feel we're isolated in some ways it's, it's yes. a sort of dichotomy you've got this sort of isolation mm. where we we do not have institutions for mosaic learning such as the Spielenberger Mosaic School or the Mosaic School of uh, Mosaic Ravenna or um, you know Studio Castillo in Rome or any of those we don't have that we don't have that history and tradition here where we can go and immerse ourselves in in thorough learning we don't yeah. but, but but what we do have is freedom that's true because we don't have any we have complete freedom we don't have anyone saying no you must not do this and you must not do that and you must not set up this and you must not set we have freedom so um but i think it's been really important for you and also for me and many others to go there and then to experience some of that learning and Absolutely. to view those sites and to view and really immerse ourselves in that the history and and and, and the ancient language that we're working within so what were your key moments in those in those trips? Can you give me two highlights? What were your oh, big, two, big, big two highlights big, in your in your traveling traveling education? I think, well, firstly, the connection. Okay, one one of the key moments uh, was Sardinia for me, um, being able to work with uh, Julia Minossi um, at the symposium, but also meeting the other international students. So there was ten of us. And that brought together the whole entire kit and caboodle package for me, mosaics, something that I love doing, drinking and celebrating with <laughs> lots of people, the culture, um, the history. It brought everything together in a nutshell and I just wanted to do more and more of it. Mm -hmm. I think I was, you know, exploring with, um, exploring the ways that other artists work internationally was such an eye-opener as well um, it was such a learning experience so that was that was one key um, key experience and I also think going to Spilimbergo the first time in 2017 that was um, I, all I can say is if you've never been to Spilimbergo make it a point one day in your life to try and get there um, the, the walls are adorned by the most incredible artworks. And when you look at them, you, you get this, I don't know, like a, it is, it's a thirst, it's a hunger, it's a, I want to create like these people. Mm -hmm. I want to use those materials that, that everyone else does. But it also just expands that, that, mm -hmm. that smorgasbord for you to be able to go, oh, wow, okay, so they use glass. Oh, they use paper. They use rocks. They use marble. And, you know, all the different ways that they use all the test ray, it, it sort of makes you sort of go, oh, well, I can do that. And that's what you do. You start to, you start to work with different materials and, and concentrate on different methods. And then that's how I began and, and, and started to move closer towards working with natural materials. I found that, that I had a a more instinctual love for those materials. They kept, it was, it was what I was searching for more and more um, as I sat at the table and went, okay, so I've got all this pretty glass 
and pretty um, uh, pizza and uh, all sorts of things. And um, this was actually the beginning for me, my turning point um, in working with natural material. And it was at um, a workshop that Rachel Bremner did, um, held or hosted uh, at Caitlin's studio at Woodford. And I went along, had no idea what I was going to do. No, I, you know, basically sat there in, in the workshop and said, wow, what am I going to create? And so Rachel came along and she said, all right, give me three pieces of what you've got on your table. And she literally stuck them on the board on my substrate. And she said, those pieces are not going to move. You are going to create around those pieces that I've placed on there. You can do whatever you want, whatever formation, use whatever materials, but those pieces must stay there. And that were the three natural pieces. Um, and that was the most fun I had had. It was like a challenge. Mm -mm. Someone's placed three things on there. I've got to make it look good now. <laughs> and um, I actually really fell in love with it. I fell in love with playing with turning the, you know, the tessera, the rocks, the slate, all those things around and trying to create mm -hmm. something different. Um, and that was actually my turning point of when I said, wow, this is what I want to do. This is the stuff I want to play with. This is the, the materials I want to use going forward. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, I started to, to look at even, you know, creating some of the, the coils and, you know, using uh, ceramics um, to create different variances, different heights, different textures. Um, yeah, so and this, I wanted... this work here really speaks as well to your overall conceptual investigation and the subject yes. matter. So you've got Rachel's experience where you're you've been you've been asked to solve a problem. Yes. Is that okay? Here we go. I'm just going to stick these on your substrate. Yep. Now you have to visually solve this problem. And you did. And then, but this piece here really is a bit of a departure from that because this is about something. Yes. It's about a place. And I think place and land has become, and not only the materials from that land, but then the, the idea of place has become a key thing in your work as well as aerial views. Absolutely. And uh, what, what Caitlin said there is very true. And it actually started from, um, you know, my travels, looking out the window, you know, being on the plane on your on your own, you look out the window and you go, oh, what a gorgeous mosaic. You know, look at the world from a, you know, looking at the world from above and looking at the ground below. And I was like, well, I could create a mosaic. I could, I've got all those materials. I've got green glass. I've got blue glass in my studio and I'd get excited. Mm -hmm. And all these little things would, you know, dream away in the plane. And that's where I started to, you know, sort of think about, wow, well, maybe I should do that. I went on a balloon ride, for goodness sake, and look at the pictures, like yeah. they're mosaics. Um, and I thought, well, I'm going to use these as inspiration. I want to show, um, I guess, abstractness in my um, mosaic, but, you know, using the colours and the different textures and the natural material to, to show the different undulations and and yeah I, I started to create um, mm. from the things that I was seeing from above then I went into aerial pictures mm. um, and started looking at you know just inspirational pictures that and I went oh wow I could create a mosaic out of that I've got beautiful stone that symbolizes this or beautiful glass or fruit or you know, and, and that's where I got excited about doing these um, these connections with the um, with the land. You know, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. those sorts of pieces, and you know, even to the point that I'll have to say, this has gone back about two months ago. I sat there and watched the first episode of Survivor Australia, and I saw this absolutely gorgeous aerial photo. And photography does do it for me. It gets gets my uh, it gets me excited to see photography from above, and I go, oh my gosh, I could create that with the materials I have, you know. Um, and I was looking at this this first episode, and I went, what a gorgeous land we live in, 
you know, um, look at the views from above. And I literally, in my mind, walked straight out after the show, did a little sketch, drew some arrows, colours, blah, blah, blah. And I think in about two days, I had a... Um, my my mosaic finished because it just I wanted to get it you know mm -hmm. I wanted to transport everything that I had seen in that image from that survivor episode onto a mosaic and I just went away and worked on it furiously for two days mm -hmm. and and that was it but mm -hmm. you know unfortunately I don't get the time um more recently I haven't had the time actually to to do as much mosaic as I would have liked to, I've, I've been working a bit, but. Um... Well, at the end of our, at the end of today, I'm going to ask each of the presenters as to what the question is, what's next for you? So I want you to yep. think about that and think Definitely. about how, what, what your next, next project is going to be. Uh, thank you so much, Vicky, for sharing all this with thank us today. You. Thanks, and, Caitlin. Thanks, yeah, everyone. You're, you're absolutely fantastic example of the diversity of learning and the diversity of your experiences and how <laughs> I suppose but as you said it's nine years nine years and away. you know there's this distillation that's happening and I think that's what Heather was talking about as well is that you, you're doing all this stuff learning having all these learning experiences and then it's about bringing those together and bringing them in you know what is it that you're actually wanting what is yes. it that you're personally wanting yes. you've got the techniques you've got the skills you've understood the materials you've got the undermento you understand cutting you understand adhesives you understand substrates you understand sculptures you understand form what are you going to do with all that knowledge yeah and what how you how are you going to do it in your own way yes that expresses something that you want to say what speaks to you that 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 what speaks to you is just amazing you know, one of the things that um, Heather did actually uh, say was, you know, like the materials they do, they tell you, they tell you, you, you know, what they want. And that's what I've noticed that when I look at those natural materials on my table, I look at them, I play with them, I throw in a little bit of something else, but it's those natural materials that always call me back mm. and make me want to, you know, they make me really really excited about creating more and more stuff like that and I guess that's why I've gone with that natural theme the mm -hmm. the connection to the land looking from above mm -hmm. all of those things yeah. yeah perfect thank you so much Vicky I'd like to ask you one final question what is next for you um for me um more time back in the studio I've had a little bit of you know, sort of busy, busy working, uh, working at the hospital. Uh, but I, I'm hoping to be back in the in the studio more. Mm -hmm. I'm working towards my first exhibition, mm -hmm. um, which I'm hoping that will happen next year. Uh, all going well, COVID, etc. Um, but yeah, creating a body of works, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the view from above. Yeah. And I think um, that's a beautiful goal. And we're oh, all, all looking I'm forward excited. to that happen. We'll I've be all got, there. I've got quite a lot of little pieces coming together. And um, my next sort of um, thing is to create some bigger pieces, some, some larger artworks mm -hmm. um, to go in this series. But yeah, I am. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Fantastic. I'm excited and inspired after today yeah. and hearing the other presenters and just chatting with people and yeah. oh my god my gosh. Uh, it is inspirational and yeah. you're part of that inspiration Vicky now Saskia would you like to um is there have there any questions from the participants or any other comments yes, yes we do have so uh Linda um um is asking a a, a good question um she would like to know um, if um, Vicky, the, when Vicky works with natural stone, whether the weight of the stone in your pieces, Vicky, ever determine the size or scope of the final product? No, they don't actually. Um, it, funny enough, I don't know. I just sort of look at the stone and go, yep, that'll go there. But I have noticed though, like the smaller the piece, obviously, the, the smaller your stone like I try to integrate some big stone, but also more smaller um, pieces. Um, 
yeah, like sometimes I just look at a big slab of, say, um, you know, marble and I think, well, I'm not going to stick the whole piece of marble on there. <laughs> but, you know, I like the variation personally. I like to have some big, some medium and some small. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I often pick up all the little scraps off the floor. I will mm -hmm. sweep them, I will sift them and I will grade them. Because yep. those little tiny pieces, it's not that I, I'm being wasteful. I, it's, uh, it's just about, look, it's ready. It's pre-cut. I can use that again. <laughs> and, you know, you, you sift through and you go, oh, that's the perfect piece. Here you go, you know. But often, um, no, for me, it's the, the size of the stone doesn't, yeah. doesn't determine yeah. my piece. I Thank just. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.